warm August night in 2014, a 13-year-old girl stood on the brink of history. It was bottom of the six, two outs, and the count was full. I knew I had to throw a strike in order to end the game. And as soon as it left my hand, I knew that that day forward, my life would never be the same. The world will never forget the name Monet Davis. A lot of girls have told me that because of me, they play baseball or they play on an all-guys team. As the first girl to ever pitch a complete game shutout in Little League World Series history, Monet became an instant sports icon. Crazy that no matter what age you are, that you can inspire people. We caught up with Monet to see how life has changed since she shot to fame. <laughs> Is it exciting to you that you are only 16 and you have accomplished so much? It is pretty crazy to think about all the things that I've accomplished. This is the Anderson Yards at Marion Anderson Recreation Center. So this is where it started? Yep, right here on this field a couple years ago. The Marion Anderson Recreation Center in South Philadelphia has become a beacon of hope for inner city youth like Monet, thanks to the relentless drive of Coach Steve Bandora. Ability without opportunity is nothing. So we started the Monarchs program to show that if inner city kids were given the same opportunity to develop as kids in the more affluent areas, that they could compete with those teams. It's here that Steve got his first glimpse of Monet's athletic potential when he saw the seven-year-old playing football with a group of older boys from the Monarch crew. Apparently I was tackling boys and throwing a spiral and it's like, uh, you have a pretty good arm. That was something I hadn't seen before. It's like, here's my number. Give it to your mom and come to practice. Convinced her abilities stretch beyond the football field, Steve believed that Monet would be a good fit for his seven-year-old traveling squad, which required all team members to play soccer, baseball, and basketball. And as the only girl on this team, Monet was sure to be a standout. Were you a little intimidated being the only girl? I wouldn't say I was intimidated being the only girl. I was more intimidated by playing organized sports. Were you more afraid of her playing with boys than girls? Yes, yes, I was more afraid because I didn't want to get hurt. But you know, once she got the hang of it, she was just as tough as they was. Did it ever bother you that you were playing with a girl? No, not at all. There were teams that like, kind of doubted her, but like, we just tune it out and Mo does a great job of that. From her very first practice, Monet gave the boys a run for their money, nailing difficult drills right off the bench. She sees the court and the field like a chessboard. I'm the type of person who, if I see it once or twice, then I already get the drill. When her turn came up, she did it like she had been doing it for months. She is so cerebral. That's her main strength. I think he was pretty impressed. I knew right then that she was something special. Basketball came naturally to Monet, but surprisingly when it came to baseball, she was batting zero. She didn't have a ton of success in the beginning, um, but I knew that talent was there and it would come. I just kept practicing. I just wanted to get better because I wanted to help the team out. Like I didn't want to feel like I let them down. Sports was only part of her story. She's into her sports and she's into her grades. Nothing else matters. When she joined the Monarchs, Monet was attending public school in a system academically ranked among the worst in the nation and was living in a neighborhood with a crime rate 106% higher than the national average. Sports was really like an escape because she never had time to actually hang in the streets. She made her own path. Coach Steve suggested Monet apply to Springside Chestnut Hill Academy, one of Philadelphia's top private schools, where she would have access to an advanced curriculum in a safe environment. And just like with sports, she was up for the challenge and has been on the honor roll from the get-go. Where do you get that academic drive from? I just want to be successful in life, and your whole life is going to be sports. So you got to have another option. 
Since the time Monet was in third grade, her schedule has been non-stop, starting by 5 a.m. most days and ending well after midnight. There was a point in time where you were juggling so many different sports and school and the commute that it got to be too much. I was just like, you know what, I'm tired. Like, I just want to be a kid. Determined not to let Monet's circumstances stand between her and her future, Steve and his family stepped up to the plate in a major way. Coach Steve like opened his arms to me and allowed me to stay at his house when he didn't really have to. She'd be up there for three, four days a week. So it's like her second home, you know. She's like my daughter, and that's the way I've considered her from day one. He helped me become the person I am today. He helped me become the player I am today. And it's really no words to really describe him. Steve opened Monet's eyes to the history of baseball and some influential African-American athletes who changed the face of the game. Why is it so important to teach them about Jackie Robinson and Hank Aaron and mm -hmm. all these people who've paved the way? I felt like I needed to connect the kids with that history so they can see themselves and know that this is part of the rich history of the African-American community in the city and across the country. I was so fascinated about the history that I wanted to keep learning. And Mo and her Monarch teammates were in for the ride of their lives when they hit the road on two different 23-day barnstorming tours, one to pay tribute to Jackie Robinson and the Negro Leagues, and the other to visit historic sites from the Civil Rights Movement. 4,500 miles with no electronics, no cell phones were allowed, nothing, and just lived the history. Being able to go to those historic sites, you really got to think about how much people sacrifice in order for you to have what you have today. Along the way, Monet got to meet Mamie Peanut Johnson, one of only three women to play in the Negro Leagues, the first to ever take the mound, and a hidden figure in the world of baseball. As soon as I met her, she just gave me a hug. She was just so open and so supportive. And does that fuel you moving forward to carry on the baton? In my opinion, that's an honor. And when Monet took the mound in Williamsport on August 15, 2014, as a member of Philly's All-Star team, she was determined to live up to the legends who came before her. And she blew the boys away with a powerful 70 mile per hour fastball and one nasty curve. I don't remember the first inning through the fifth inning, but I remember the last inning because I struck out like the first two batters and then the last batter I was like three and one. And it got super loud and I'm just like, why are they cheering so loud? Like I'm behind in the count right now. Like I might walk this kid. But in front of a global audience of more than five million people, Monet struck out the side, becoming the first girl to pitch a shutout in tournament history and changing what it means to throw like a girl. The night she pitched a shutout, she was trending number one on Twitter. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Monet became an overnight sensation and earned her spot as the first little leaguer ever to land the cover of Sports Illustrated. They said I knocked Kobe off the cover and I was like, this can't be real life. And it did pretty much happen overnight. And it's kind of hard being 13 and put into the spotlight. Have there been haters? There were teams that would call me a boy and saying I couldn't pitch, like I shouldn't be playing. Are you kidding me? Dead serious. I, I just thank those people because for every one person that's hating, there's like four or five people who really look up to you. Her success at the Little League World Series earned Monet plenty of accolades, like her title as Sports Kid of the Year and an ESPY award for Breakthrough Athlete. She even wrote an autobiography called Monet Davis, Remember My Name. But she knew she made it big when she was invited to hang out at the White House. I had to talk to Mrs. Obama and she was like, keep going, like you inspired so many people. She tweeted about me and I was just like, Oh my God. You've made like, it when Flotus is tweeting <laughs> about you. But one of the biggest moments of her young life was having her jersey inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Like, I literally can't believe 
that my jersey is next to Derek Jeter's jersey. I'm just glad it happened. So now I can always go back and just remember those times. What did that moment mean to you when you got to be the one to induct Mo's jersey into the Hall of Fame? I can't even describe it. It represents the possibilities and potential of inner city kids. And for young girls, and especially young African-American girls, she's an incredible person to aspire to be like. I mean, I see boys pretending they're Monet Davis. So I start like this. While many kids aspire to be like Monet, she wants to be a coach one day. I'll pass you the ball, and then you lay it up. Just like the man who taught her everything she knows. Come on. You and roll. I'm turning, and I'm rolling. And a professional basketball career is pretty much guaranteed. The Harlem Globetrotters drafted her when she was just 14 and are holding a spot for her to join the team when she graduates college. You were the third woman drafted for the Globetrotters. I never knew that. That's it. So wait, yes. I taught you something new about yourself today? Yeah, that's crazy. It's you been more this. than three years since Monet Mania has swept the nation. And now as she looks back on the experience, she knows she never would have gotten there without the incredible team of people who've always stood behind her. Do you think it takes a community of people to make a modern hero like yourself? Yes. It does take a community. My teammates, my family, friends, my coach, all of them are heroes in my eyes. What message do you have for people who look up to you as a role model? Work hard, uh, follow your dreams, um, have fun, and if you be yourself, then everybody will remember your name. If this modern hero inspires you, please share. It helps us bring you more stories. And don't forget to subscribe to the Modern Hero YouTube channel.